Good morning. Welcome back to the course. In this lecture, we'll take you to the lab for the laboratory demonstration. The lab is for I lab in IIT Kanpur. This is an advanced machining, advanced manufacturing lab at IIT Kanpur, which is an um, uh, elite facility that we have here. And uh, like we have seen different rapid prototyping techniques. In this lab demonstration, we'll just discuss with 3D printing. 3D printing using a specific machine that is there in the lab. The name of the machine is Tech B V30. And uh, our laboratory demonstration, the instructor is there who has made this video and we were in the lab, we developed this video and I am trying to put my voice to demonstrate it properly. So, let us start this and go to the lab. So, good morning, welcome back to the course product design and manufacturing. So, in this week, we are trying to study the rapid prototyping and additive manufacturing. So, right now we are in 4i lab, that is the facility in IIT Kanpur, 4i, 4i's are innovation, incubation, implementation and integration. In this laboratory, we have uh, multiple machines which are non-conventional and advanced machines. We do research and also consultancy is being carried out here. So, uh, at this point of time, we would like to discuss about this machine, Tech B V30. We will start with the demonstration of the software that is used for rapid prototyping here. Then we will set up the machine, we will do the make the whole setup. Then we will see how rapid prototyping various features, various parameters are taken into account while manufacturing. This is additive manufacturing as I mentioned earlier. This is a 3D printer. Tech B is uh, one of the companies in India that is making, that is manufacturing the 3D printers. So, this uses FDM technology. FDM as we have discussed, FDM is fuse deposition machining method. Uh, there are two major kinds of machines in the machine sections as we know now. Uh, FDM and SLA, FDM is fused deposition machining and SLA is stereolithography operators. Ok, I like to put some light. In FDM, there is a big variety of colors that are, those are available. Like uh, we can have red, yellow and white are the major colors. Also, there are certain companies who are manufacturing the colors based upon demand. But in SLA, the color variety is not possible. There are certain differences in FDM and SLA. This is this is only uh, FDM machine. Uh, uh, this has two spools, two uh, nozzles in which we can use two colors and the multicolor of the bicolor products can be made. Uh, okay, about FDM and SLA. FDM machine produce products with the precision, but the precision level in SLA is higher. The res higher resolution objects are uh, more possible to produce in SLA because resin is there. The resolution is primarily determined by the optical spot size either of the laser or the projector and that is really small in SLA. In FDM, it is the printer, the printer resolution is a factor of the nozzle size and the precision of the extruder movements that extruder will discuss in this uh, demonstration as well. The precision and smoothness of the printed models is also influenced by the other factors such as bonding force between the layers, if it, is it lower or is it uh, adequate, then uh, uh, the weight of the upper layers that squeeze upon the lower layers, the number of printing problems like uh, warping, misalignment, these uh, printing defects might be there, shrinking, uh, shifting of layers, all those things could be there. And there is a difference in post-processing as well. In general, FDM requires no or very little post-processing because the pro products are generally produced to the final shape. Only the thing is that the support that is provided, the support material or the brim or raft that we will discuss has to be removed. In SLA, post-processing level is quite higher because it, it is made of resin and all the extra material that is there has to be removed and it has to be taken out from the box where it is made. So, there is a big difference. So, where we are more focused on FDM fuse deposition method. So, this machine that is FDM machine deposition method of fuse deposition machining, this machine can use two kinds of filaments or there are multiple filaments like uh, ABS then um, PLA, it can use P ABS, PLA and uh, ABS is uh, acrylolytrile, butadiene, styrene as you know and it is oil based plastic, it is strong sturdy material that is widely used these days like 
Lego building blocks, Lego toys are made of this uh, ABS to quote an example. And uh, PLA, PLA is one of another materials. Uh, it is polylactic acid. It is made of organic material specifically from the cornstarch or sugar cane. It is makes the material both easier and safer to use while giving it a smoother and shinier appearance. So it has more aesthetically appealing products which are made of out of it. Now this PLA thermoplastic is also more pleasant on nose like it smells lesser like as the sugar waste material smells slightly sweet when heated opposed to the harsh materials associated with ABS. When we heat ABS the uh, smell is quite annoying. In PLA this is the, not the case. So this means that the printing using these parts it more friendly for the operator and also PLA seems like a better overall choice because it features far low melting points as well. The melting point of PLA is quite lower than ABS. So I would not move into that track now. So let us discuss about this machine. Uh, this machine uh, is basically using SV FDM technology. The raw material moves from the tube and comes up to the head that is the nozzle around which heaters are there. And uh, when we switch on the machine, the heating system gets on. when we switch off the machine the heating system gets on there are two nozzles here nozzle A and nozzle B you can see. So the temperature when, when we switch on the machine the temperature rises and it goes up to 200 to 230 degrees centigrade at this temperature the raw material kept in the form of wire comes out near the nozzle near the nozzle it comes out through the nozzle so it is come it coming through this tube we will show this demonstration. Now this portion is known as head where the nozzles are attached. So the material is fused and comes out from these nozzles. These are two nozzles here, nozzle A and nozzle P. Why two nozzles are there? We will just explain. One nozzle is for the base material, another is for support. Uh, so this is a very fine orifice of the nozzle. That or the orifice die of the nozzle is 0.4 mm. 0.4 mm when all this bed area uh, maintain the soaking temperature of the bed of 50 to 60 to 65 degree, 50 to 65 degree temperature is maintained here. The temperature it heat up a little bit. So as it the temperature is it is actually the preparation of the table. It is heated to some specific temperature so that the material that is deposited here the temperature of the material is about 200 degrees. This temperature is kept about 50 degrees so that it can stick easily so that it sets easily here. So this will have to deposit one layer, layer upon other than another during fabrication or manufacturing. Whatever we want to fabricate here in FDM technology, the machine size is this machine size is one feet by one feet by one feet. So in X Y Z directions, the envelope is one cubic feet. I can say one cubic feet envelope is there. So it is just plug and play machine. Once we have a little practice on this, along with the hardware, we have a software here that also gets on when we switch on the machine. This is the software when we switch on this it comes tech B. So tech B is the machines the software is switching on this tech B software is getting on as you can see slicer, slicer 1 and slicer 2 the two slicers are there. Okay. So there are CPU and controllers which are here at the bottom surface of the machine. CPU and controllers for this software is here. So the two nozzles one for model and one is for support one for model and one for support two nozzles are there. So if any profile or any geometry where we find this taper is more than 45 degree we need to provide support like I discussed um, then the two nozzles will automatically activate and that will provide the support to produce the final product final model that we need to obtain. So this all feedback is given to the head with the help of software. Uh, that will be described later on. So precautions while we use this machine are in certain precautions when we try to switch on this machine the nozzle is quite hot. So we cannot touch the nozzle with bare hands. Also we need to place uh, this machine it is general precaution we need to place this machine in room temperature air conditioners are not recommended because humidity or moisture would hinder the quality of the product. And we also need to avoid mishandling or prevent the machine from any uh, rough handling and uh, the nozzle cleaning is very important nozzle, nozzle cleaning has to be done before machining but hot nozzle should not be cleaned with hand that is very important here. 
so there are certain sharp edges in the machine as well sharp edges like in the nozzle head or certain the sharp edges are there we need to be careful that we do not touch these sharp edges and uh, be careful in this is the safety precautions when we start the machine next with this machine we can manufacture parts with sharp corners any areas any radius and the profiles with pocket the profiles which are empty inside or is hollow and uh, one of one more feature of this mini machine is that we can print two different color models from these two nozzles nozzle a and nozzle b if you two different colors can be obtained like yellow and red different colors can be obtained and those can be produced as well so we on this computer screen we have a software called repitire so we have slicer 1 and slicer 2 here so if the machine is the machine is with two heads with both hands we individually work uh, in this machine there is a single head if the two heads are there the machine though both heads can work independently so you know there is a single head here single head on the single head here two nozzles are attached so that is why only slicer 1 is visible here so the software is starting on repitire software is starting on repitire host is a specific name of the software 6.2 is the version then we need to connect the software to hardware now both the interface to each other when we start machining that is try to fabricate anything on 3d printing we have to take care of number of things like cleaning of bed cleaning of head nozzles and proper cooling as well for cooling we have to check that there are two fans two fans are above just above the head that should be running so whenever we start the fabrication of this machine we have to take care of few things like uh, proper cleaning flatness of the bed and uh, we can adjust the level of the bed with four screws you can see this 1 2 3 and 4 four screws are there so these four screws are have you are uploaded here using spring mechanism so when we fabricate a model of big size uh, the height will increase height increases and sometimes it will vibrate due to the height and uh, gapping would vary so that is why the spring loaded mechanism would help to adjust the movement in the nozzle so you can see you can see there is a spring mechanism here so that helps to adjust the movement so in this way uh, we'll make the leveling of the bed also when we go whenever we go for calibration so we use these screws to loosen and tighten and to make sure that the bed is flat it is secure with the uh, with the with its adjacent surface as well so in this software we can deposit lay thickness in slicing from 0.1 0.15 and 0.2 the three levels here whenever we change this parameter of the position of layer height wise then we need to maintain the gap as well so say let me say i have fixed one 0.15 from the top of the bed to the tip of the nozzle so we need to set this gap and lock the limit switch the limit switch is on this side limit switch is on this side so we can lock the limit of the bed using this lay so so to bed can move up to a specific limit only so bed would go up or down as per the locking that we make here also whenever we start depositing fabrication of raw material we have to take care of a few things like uh, what are we feeding here because the raw material is in the form of a spool it is an open spool kept at, kept at the back of the machine it is there spool we will just show you we have we need to take care of it because uh, when we keep this when we attach this material in the boxes we have to use silica and calcium and this makes it moisture free it if our raw material that is that i mentioned abs or pla if it is moisturized then it obstructs the proper deposition of the job here whenever we start we input the data to the machine for fabrication after switching on the machine we have to take care of few things on the display here you can see this display because the hardware that is connected to the software and displayed to this screen on the screen we have program we start feeding the data to the hardware we have to take care of number of things after switching on the machine after switching the machine itself gets connected 
to its software. Whenever we start, we have to go to the option number 1 that is object placement, which means that what we need to print we will place it here first, the place of placement of the object here. So, when we click on uh, when we click here a few things will be highlighted, few icons are highlighted like this add object, this plus sign is add object. So, what we want to add, we click add object here and so when we click it, it opens the drive or the any uh, the location in the computer like the C O D drive where the object is kept. So, wherever we have kept the CAD model for fabrication, whatever we want to fabricate we can just go and click there or we can even generate some model. So, this model known as rubber bargava viru, this model is there. So, we will click here. So, yes, when we click here this job is there here on the envelope. What is envelope? Envelope is this where we are going to manufacture this thing. So, this is 1 cubic feet that is 1 feet by 1 feet by 1 feet. The envelope size is this one. Okay. So, this area is 1 feet by 1 feet. I can say that on the area of 1 feet by 1 feet or 1 square feet, this object would be manufactured. Okay. So, it is actually this is our base plate where it is manufactured. So, this is our envelope that is being displayed in the software. The approximate size of this model is 4 inch by 1 inch by 2 inch. So, whenever we start fabricating, we need to see the program, we have to program it. Either the program would be generated by machines, by the software itself or we have to manually program using G codes that we will discuss. So, this job of uh, this height of the entire job will cut in number of slices here, number of slices. Okay. How many layers would be there that the machine would just decide. So, we have to program in terms of slicing and the machine will deposit one slice in one stroke and this will be deposited layer by layer and finally becomes a complete job. Here in object placement, there are other icons like copy object, copies like we can make one or two or three copies like we are making two copies, the three copies are made of this object. So, single CAD model can be printed in multiple models using this command we just copy. Okay. This is product design, CAD, computer edit design. Yeah, this is auto positioning. Auto positioning, what is auto positioning? So, when we need to print at the center, auto positioning will bring the object at exact center in the envelope. So, we need, need not to drag it, we are like we, we, we were dragging before, we need not to drag it. Okay. Next one is center object. Auto positioning. Auto positioning it will position the object so as the least material is used. Uh, center object is similar to auto positioning. In auto positioning, what happens? This is auto positioning. In auto positioning, what happens? It place the object so as the minimum material is used, so as the material has to travel uh, the minimum path. And in auto centering, object will be placed at the center of the envelope, exactly at the center. Like we were dragging, like might we have might uh, offset the object while dragging manually, but this will create it exactly at the center. Now, yeah, this is scale object. Now, here scaling means changing the size of the object, making it oversize, undersize or upscale and downscale are better words. You can say x is made twice, okay, x is actually made twice. Now, y is made again twice, thrice. We are scaling the object. So, upscaling this one. You can see it is made 0.5. So, this is scaling of the object. Sometimes the CAD model we draw is big and we just may need to produce a prototype or just a, a field model out of that, then we can just downscale it and produce. So, this is this case, this is a direct uh, provision for that. This is a feature in the software for this one. So next icon here is rotate object. Sometimes, uh, like I discussed, like we have discussed that the 
placement of the object or the alignment of the object in, is very important in deciding the support material that is used or the amount of support material that is used. So, to properly align the job like in uh, x direction we have aligned it to 90 degrees. So, this is rotation. So, we can make the job in this position as well like if the BBC see that uh, how much material would be used, lesser material will be used. So, support material that would be consumed would be lesser, can be reduced by, by deciding or by selecting the specific alignment here. So, sometimes we have the pure flat surface. If there is flat surface, it is the perfect thing. The flat surface, if it will deposit properly on the flat surface, it is exactly perfect. But you can see that we have an angle here. In this, we have an, a little angle here. Like we need to have some support here. So, for that, we need to see what should be the proper alignment so as this support is minimum. So, we rotate and try to keep the CAD, CAD is more about this model, computer design model. We have, I will use, keep on using the word CAD for this model. This CAD, this CAD is kept in proper alignment so as to minimize the material use. Look, y, y is kept 0, x 90, z 90. So, if y is kept uh, again 90, so the height increases. What is the drawback when we increase height? When we increase height, because it is manufacturing layer by layer, this is very important to note. If we increase the height, the total time would increase. So, the height has to be optimized, it has to be minimum. You know, these many number of layers are to be deposited. So, the total time would increase. So, total, total time we need total economy, total cost of the product would also increase because in product cost function, the machining time is one of its factor. So, this is not a very good position to manufacture here. So, we can opt to select the in flat position and we orient the job in proper place and position. So, next is view cross section. This icon is view cross section. Sometimes we need to see what is what is in the inside inside uh, uh, portion of the uh, this job. So when when we need to see the inside of the job, for example, we we have called this CAD model from the customer. The customer has just made this model, brought this model for us. So we do not we are not aware that um, what is the profile inside. The, are there any holes? Some pockets, some countersink holes. So, if the customer is not able to describe it properly, the manufacturer or the operator has to be very careful. It is the duty of the operator to be, uh, be conversant with what he is going to manufacture. So, then the manufacturer has to take care of everything. We use this icon to check it in the section view. You can see. So, blue is the upper surface, blue color is the upper surface and green color is inside, what is inside. So, this is the color difference, color coding is here. So, blue is the upper surface, inside it is a solid model, it is not hollow, it is not hollow from inside. This is the inside model. So, we can just in view cross section uh, tab, we have this bar position. Okay. We are checking the position from here. So, major purpose of this is to identify whether the model is solid or hollow. If it is hollow, then we have to be careful about the thickness, what has to be thickness of the surface. Uh, the thickness of the shell has to be according to the requirement. It has to be according to rigidity, whatever requirements we need. So, so this is again is inclination. Inclination the at some angle also, you can see the angle is changing. This is 0 angle. This angle is about 90 degree here. So, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is azimuth. So, we can rotate it from the bottom here. We can see another viewpoint from this. 
So, in this way using these deep three tabs we can see each detail for instance there are multiple features deep features or the intricate features in this job we can see that what is there inside the job provided the CAD model has all those features. Now, this is the actual part of now. Now, the last one is very common thing mirror object, this is mirror object. This is we can change from left to right or right to left. So, now what we identified that the placing of the CAD has to be proper, only then we can go to less level it is slicing. Okay. So, next tab is slicing. So, this is I can say the most important tab because we are going to discuss this slicing here. So, slicing with Cura engine. So, Cura engine uh, is the software that is used for slicing here. So, slicing the time used in V30, this machine V30 is Cura engine. So, it cares the quality of the product that we need to manufacture. It will discuss everything like thickness, wall thickness, quality, support, then uh, volume, time. So, the word engine means it is the heart, word Q engine, engine um, I just uh, can say it is the heart or lifeline of the software. So, this uh, whatever we need to fabricate would be majorly decided by this portion only. Now, we have manager here, manager tab when we click the manager tab this opens this window pops up. The manager is for the advanced version, this is for, for instance. Uh, this manager is here. Uh, this is for the advanced for instance uh, some manufacturer is there, some big manufacturer is there and need to he need to calibrate the machine, he need to go to the advanced settings, then he can use this manager. We would not use this. Uh, next one is configuration. When we click the configuration, what we can see? We have this Cura engine settings here. So the two tabs here, filament, very important here and print. What is filament? Filament is a raw material that we are using for printing like I mentioned ABS or PLA that is there in the filament form. This is the raw material, this is filament. So, this is white color ABS filament, this is rolled on a spool. So, it can be white, it can be red, you can say red and uh, white. So, white is the most common color that is used in FM technologies nowadays. So, white and yellow actually, white and yellow are the most common colors that are used in FM technologies. So, this is 3D, 3D Cura, 3D view, in Cura in the sense we have 3D view, 3D view, temperature curve and Cura, temperature curve we can just see. When we actually do machining, so, nozzle at the nozzle heaters are there, heater is supposed to heat. So, to fuse the raw material heaters are heated. So, it the orifice at from the orifice the material would come and this temperature would be shown in the window. So, in the Cura we have these settings. So, we can talk about print or filament here. This is print, this is filament. So, very first thing is speed and quality, speed and quality, speed and quality are two interrelated terms I can say um, the opposite terms in this specific machine because if the speed is higher the quality would be a little lower and if the quality has to be good the speed cannot be very high. So, speed and quality like it has to be optimized, so that is why this term speed and quality is there like uh, while deciding these uh, different parameters in speed and quality print travel I will just discuss this. Also the automatic setting is also uh, is there in the software as well. So, speed and quality are interrelated. So, we do not want to waste the waste the material, we do not want to lose time to, to because that would increase the cost if we lose the material uh, that will also induce some cost. Next is structure. In structures we have shell thickness, 
a top bottom thickness, infill overlap, infill pattern. So, we will discuss this one by one. So, let us come to speed and quality first. Speed and quality. So, we have print, travel, first layer, outer parameter, inner parameter, infill, skin infill. What are these? Let us try to discuss this one by one. So, what we have? We can have the limits here for the any any of these uh, parameters, any of these uh, manufacturing parameters I can say. Okay. In print the slowest speed and the fastest speed. So, the at slow it is kept 40. So, a purpose is that the material that we drop here should stick with the base plate with this. If it does not stick then there is a complete wastage of the material and even the part might not build properly. So, the travel speed of the nozzle has to be designated. So, it is kept slow and fast it is same that is a fixed speed is 40 millimeters per second. For printing it is 40 and 40 for travel, travel means when it is not printing, when it is not productive it is moving just ideally from one place to another it, the speed is high it is 150 and 150, 150 means uh, both 150 slow and 150 fast means the speed is fixed to 150 millimeters per second. So, you can see the first layer is kept 40 and 40 and outer perimeter is 20 and 20. So, this is a important thing to discuss here. So, if the part is hollow from inside then we have to be very careful about the outer shell. So, it is mandatory or it is uh, I can say compulsory that the outer surface becomes really smooth and shiny and uh, up to the size up to size up to mark and the dimension of the profile should be accurate. So, inside filling can go fast, but outside surface that is the periphery of the jobs is to be of high quality. So, good finish we always take care of the outer parameter speed that is kept lower that is 20 and 20 ok 20 millimeters per second 20 millimeters per second for slow and fast both. For filling it is 40 and 40 again. So, that is not very significant. So, in the same way inner parameter is 30 and 30, inner parameter is 30 and 30 and uh, the infill if of if your job your, your part is solid, if a part is solid the infill the inner part whatever the filled in is called infill that is 40 and 40 ok. Another uh, parameter here is skin infill, skin infill is kept 30 and 40 millimeters per second. So, this is quality and speed, this is speed and this is quality, speed is also related to quality in one way. It has mentioned another term quality here, here in this tab. So, what is the quality that is the quality of the layers that we are going to good what we are going to deposit here, Point 0.1 is very thin is very fine. So, it is highest quality. 0.15 is a little higher and the lowest quality is 0.2. So, if the layer thickness is 0.1 the job would come very smooth and shiny. If it is uh, 0.2 it would be the worst among these and 0.15 is in, in, is in between. So, 0.2 mm means that it consumes less amount of time, but the quality goes down. So, in this way sometimes you find that our dimension here or uh, our profile shape is important. So, quality factor is not very important that only the profile shape is there then we go then we can go for rapid printing that is uh, uh, 0.2 mm can be there. Sometimes we feel that the size and dimension as well as quality that we need to keep uh, uh, has to be higher. So, we can keep 0 0.5 0 0.1 mm layer thickness. After setting all we go for the next thing that is called a structure ok. In structure we have shell thickness that is set as 0.12 top and bottom is 1.6 mm shell thickness is 1.2 mm top bottom thickness is 1.6 mm. So, infill overlap is 15 percent. So, what is basically infill overlap when one bead is deposited over the other bead it will overlap. So, it cannot if it does not overlap it cannot stick with the first layer. So, the first layer will stick the first layer will stick with the second layer 
for instance this layer thickness is 0 0.1 the second layer thickness is again 0 0.1 so there will be some overlap so this overlap how much overlap we need to we can keep here so what will happen it will displace the nozzle if this overlap is not here this is 0 0.1 and this is 0 0.1 the nozzle will touch this one and it will it will it might displace the nozzle it might the part might distort so some overlap should be there so as there has to be some gap here for the nozzle to work in okay some gap at the surface has to be there so for that this overlap limit is given. So, this overlap limit can be 15 percent or 20 percent. So, this is a kind of an overlap. The second layer would not be exactly on the top of the first layer, it will be a little overlap. In this case, as you can just see, like the fingers, we are just uh, going to try and demonstrate that 50 percent of 5, 0 percent of overlap can be seen here, but it is 1, 5, 15 percent of exact overlap would be there if we put this input in the machine. So, this bead is deposited in this way. So, sticking the layer would not be proper if this overlap is not there and uh, the proper overlap that the fill amount of 15 percent, then there is an overhang angle as well here. Okay. So, overhead angle is 60 degree here. So, overhead angle here is for, for the machinery, for this machinery. If we are going to deposit, I would better say deposit or print or manufacture any job, if it is a solid, there is no issue at all. If it is a conical shape, an angle is up to 60 degree. Well, 60 degree means if the angle is 60 degree like this, if it is about 60 degree, nothing would happen, it just deposit slice by slice. But if angle is more than 60 degree here, it has to have supports here, uh, like it has to have supports here to support the material. So, this over an angle that we can decide, okay, that we can decide over an angle has to be fixed, that is fixed at 60 degrees here. So, this over an angle is 60 degrees and uh, next what we have here. So, we need to see that is there anything overhang in the CAD model, in the CAD model if there is no overhang is there, then we need to put this angle. So, if that is anything is overhung, then we need to provide the support and only then we can proceed further. So, then overhang angle has to be cited. So, next is extrusion. So, this is extrusion of the filament from the spool to the nozzle. So, this is a retraction speed, retraction speed is 40 mm millimeter per second retraction distance is 4.5 mm. There is basically a roller at the back of the machine that is responsible for uh, bringing the filament to the nozzle. So, there are two rollers and the filament passes through them, the filament moves through them to the tube to go to the head. So, this retraction speed or feeding of the raw material is uh, 40 millimeters per second. So, as power speed of printing, whatever the speed of printing is there, that speed would be kept here okay, in the extrusion. Now, retraction distance is 4.5 mm and uh, a number of considerations are there, but these are not very important uh, uh, because when we are going to servicing, we are going to service or overhaul the machine these things are set by the G code. Because when we go for overhauling or service of the machines, these uh, things are set by the manufacturer or the provider themselves. Next one is G code. So, we are talking about slicing here, okay? this slicing with QR engine. In slicer, in the slicer, when first we had object fill up placement, then we have slicer, second tab here. In slicer, there are multiple options here. Now, this is G code. So, uh, slicing is nothing but depositing the layers, but how to control the movement of the nozzle in the x, y or z direction that has to be taken care by a program. And this programming system is known as G code programming system. If you know CNC programming, G code and N code might be conversant. Uh, and this programming system is known as G code and G code and M codes are both there. These are mostly used for CNC programming like milling, turning and other machinings. The same code is used here in 3D priming for the movement of the head over the bed for depositing the material. We will meet in the next lecture. We will discuss further about the course.
थैंक यू